What if I told you that hidden beneath the surface of Madagascar, there lies a secret love letter to Jungian psychology, a story that explores the deep, dark recesses of our psyche, and with the help of our protagonist Alex, takes us on a journey of discovering the horrors that lurk within our shadows, as we watch a lion explore each stage of shadow integration in Jungian psychology that makes Madagascar a hidden masterpiece. As the beginning of the story unfolds, we're presented with a persona that Alex has created as a tame, docile lion merely performing for guests at the New York Zoo as he acts out a facade of lion-like behaviours, all the while people throw flowers and panties at him. And when he isn't performing, he's being fed steaks underneath a heater, all artificially replicating his environment. Alex's animalistic instincts have been completely tamed. He has no need to hunt for food, no need to struggle for survival. He even says that he can't eat steak in the wild when Marty suggests leaving the zoo. Alex is so disconnected from his primal self that he doesn't even realise he eats animal flesh, and the thought of ever leaving the zoo for his natural home in the wild terrifies him. He's created this persona of a circus-like performing lion that completely denies and neglects any semblance of his ancestral instincts. And Alex wants nothing more than to live in complete denial of these qualities lurking deep within him. But like many of us find out, consciously or not, life invariably lures these shadow characteristics to the surface one way or another. And for Alex, this happens when he escapes the zoo to save Marty, but ends up stranded on a remote tropical island of Madagascar. From the moment they arrive, Alex struggles endlessly to adapt to his natural environment. He can't navigate the terrain, he can't find food, he can't find shelter. Alex lacks the capacity to adapt to living in the wild because he has for so long neglected his animalistic instincts. Instead of harnessing his instincts as a lion to not only survive but thrive in his newfound environment, he's overwhelmed by it, falling victim to the rustling of the leaves, starvation of the elements. Alex falls short because he's rejected a core aspect of his being, this natural, predatory instinct that all lions have. And just like we so often do, he feels compelled to blame his shortcomings on Marty. Alex doesn't believe it's his own fault his weaknesses are now manifesting in the real world. Instead he blames Marty for leaving the zoo in the first place. But as he begins to explore the wild, his primal instincts start to shine through. He stops the Fusa from attacking the lemurs by roaring at a spider and inadvertently scaring them all away without even realising it. He even makes Mort cry simply by saying hello. Gradually, as Alex explores the wild, his natural instincts manifest, and he becomes more and more comfortable with them, which culminates in him dreaming of steak falling from the sky and eventually waking up to licking Marty's ass. It's here in the story that we begin to understand and acknowledge the existence of something deep down inside of Alex. We begin to realise that his instincts are very much real. And Alex becomes possessed the moment he's confronted with the open plains of Madagascar, and Marty encourages Alex to integrate his wild side and be a real lion by running on all fours, which sparks all of these unintegrated and neglected instincts to pour forth. But because Alex has for so long ignored these traits, he becomes overwhelmed and ultimately possessed by them. The monster Alex has for so long suppressed is now unleashed, and with this, his physical appearance becomes feral, as his ever-kept mane is now an unkempt mess. His eyes are bloodshot, his claws permanently protruding, his roar is deep and carnally aggressive, and he now walks on all fours like a real lion. Alex has fallen beyond the realm of bringing his shadow into existence, and has now become possessed by it. Seeing his friends as nothing more than pieces of steak, before losing all control and pouncing on Marty in an attempt to hunt his prey. As Alex finds himself on the brink of hunting down his own best friend to devour him, he banishes himself to the realm of the predators on the other side of the island, where he constructs a prison to contain himself, with spiked tree trunks circled around him, all pointing inwards as if to imprison a dangerous beast within. Alex now acknowledges the very existence of his shadow, of his animalistic instincts that are predator in nature, and he's afraid of them. It's not only that Alex believes the monster is who he is, but rather he's afraid of its very existence. He thinks that this means there's something wrong with him. Alex suddenly rejects all possibility of returning to the zoo, or even to his friends, because he now fears what he's becoming. He now knows these instincts are very much a part of who he is, but he's afraid of them, and so chooses to repress not only his primal instincts, but his entire being. By rejecting the very worst in himself, he also rejects the very best. Alex has faced a terrifying reflection of his shadow, and is too afraid of what could happen if he allows its contents to service. But when Marty risks his life to save Alex, and show him that he doesn't believe the monster overcame him is the true Alex. He's surrounded by Fusa, and Alex has no choice but to free himself from his own prison and harness his predatory instincts as king of the jungle to save his friends, warning the Fusa never to set foot in his territory again with flaying claws and bare teeth. Here we see the importance of integration with the shadow in full view. Without bringing his animalistic instincts into consciousness, facing them, struggling with their power and eventually integrating them, Alex would have been powerless to simply sit and watch as Marty was ripped apart by the Fusa. Instead, Alex channeled his shadow qualities hidden deep within his nature, and wielded them not as a blunt force weapon to destroy the Fusa, but as a tool to save his friend. And just as Alex is capable of channeling his animalistic instincts to prosper, we as humans are able to channel the darker aspects of our personalities, of our very nature, in order to shine. We do not need to repress those shadow qualities that haunt us, but rather bring their existence into conscious reality, face them, and work to improve upon them. If we lack the capacity to wield our shadow qualities when we need them most, 
they will serve us regardless. The only difference is whether we're prepared to face them or be consumed by them.